Beloveds, this morning again, Dr. T.S. Mligwe here welcoming you to Kingdom Life Ministries International Broadcast. We're welcoming you this morning with joy. And let's continue to study the Word because it is in the Word where we get life, eternal life that is. Ladies and gentlemen, last Sunday we closed talking about abiding in Christ Jesus. Because the Bible said that is when we will bear much fruit. But the very closing statement we were answered, we were uh, referred to was that if we abide in Christ, we shall ask for anything we want and we shall be given. So we were saying that is the reason why now we understand why some of the prayers we pray earnestly, we never get answers. Now we know it is because we probably don't abide in Christ. We visit Christ on Sunday. And during the week, during the prayer night, maybe we, we visit and after the prayer we disconnect, go to the world and be in the world the whole week until Sunday morning, then we try to reconnect. Ladies and gentlemen, that, that cannot be. That cannot be. It cannot be. I cannot be a black man right through the weekend on Sunday, I'm a white man. And then Monday, I'm a black man. The whole week, Sunday, I'm a white man. It doesn't work. There's nothing like that. Either I'm a black man or I'm a white man. That's it. So, friends, Jesus said if you abide in him, whatever we ask. Let's read it. Uh, John 15, 7. John 15, 7. If you abide in me and my words and my words and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. So there are two things. It is me abiding in the Lord. Number two, it is the word of God abiding in me. Remember what God said to Joshua through Moses. He said, Joshua, um, this word of the Lord, he called it the law of the law. This word of the Lord, which is the law, which was the law then, it says it should never depart of your mouth and you must meditate on it day and night so that you will have good success. So God was saying, for one to have good success, for one to be real and genuinely be in, 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 in good connection with God and to enjoy God and God to enjoy them, they've got to abide in the word. So Jesus comes and he says, listen, you abide in me and my word. And my word. You know why? Because it, faith cometh from hearing the word. When I am meditating on the word time, time and again, and faith is the product of the word, it means I stay in faith. Do you see the logic? When I'm forever or conscious of the word, what the word says, and I'm doing the word, I'm meditating on the word, I speak the word, I, I, I don't detach from the word, it means I stay in faith. So Jesus said, if you abide in me and you, my word abide in you, you shall ask what you will, what you want, what you desire. God, the Bible says, he'll do it for you. Now, obviously the opposite is also true. If I don't abide, I don't stay in the, in the word, and the word does not, it's not in me. I don't even know what I'm believing. I live in a world of unbelief and doubts and stuff like that. Then God is not obliged. God doesn't owe me anything. You get the point? That's point. That's, that's reason number one why some of our prayers are not answered. Let's go to number two. In Matthew chapter 21 verse 22, Jesus is teaching here. He says, and all things, all things, friends, all things, not some things, not many things, all things. What about all things? Whatsoever you shall ask. Whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Watch this. It doesn't say whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, you shall receive. No, 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 no. It says whatever you ask in prayer, number one. Number two, believing. Believing. In other words, by faith. By faith. By faith. It shall be done. Friends. God will not depart from his word. God is bound by his word. He doesn't change. He stay his way. In other words, his word is his reflection. His word is what God is. He said if you pray for something, you shall receive it if, if you believe. In other words, by faith. You ask, but by faith. We shall confirm it with the book of James. You ask, but by faith. 
If you ask by faith, God is obliged to give you what you desire. So if we ask and we doubt, we ask and we wonder if it will happen. God says it's a closed chapter. You're not going to get it. So friends, let's look at how we're doing things. Because God is only bound by his word. God will never change from what his word says. He said, whatever we ask, if we believe by faith, we shall receive. But if we doubt, he already have said, we shall not get anything. He said, we ask in prayer, believing. Let's read from James as he confirms that. James chapter 1 from verse 5. The Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom or lack anything other than wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and unbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Verse 6, what is the condition? How do we do it? But let him ask in faith. Let him ask in faith. Let him ask believing. Nothing wavering, in other words, without doubting. For he that wavereth or doubts is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind. And toss the verse 7. For let not that man, woman, boy or girl, that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Oh my God. God is so clear with what he's doing. He says if we ask for anything, believing or by faith, we shall get it. If you ask for anything by faith, the Bible says we shall get it. What is to ask by faith? That means to ask and believe, I receive. You ask and you believe. By the time you are praying, you receive. You believe, you receive. Or you have received. You have received. You have received. That is what we call by faith. But if you pray... And you say, well, maybe I shall receive. That's not faith. That's, that's hope. Now he says, pray and believe in faith. By faith, you shall get whatever you're asking for. Ladies and gentlemen, my goodness. It's so clear and so simple. God is saying, number two, when we ask with unbelief, we shall not get what we want. Because God is the author of faith. Satan is the author of doubts and unbelief. So the Bible says, whatever you're asking for, ask by faith. Ask by faith. What is that? Believe that when you pray, you receive. Believe you have received. Believe you receive. Believe you have received. Are two are the same concept of presentness. Present time. Now. That's faith. So when we pray and believe I shall receive, you will never get it. The Bible says you will never get it. You get the point? So that's reason number two. Reason number one, it's not abiding. Number two, it is doubts. We receive with, un we pray and with unbelief. We receive and we pray and we doubt. We don't get it. Let's go to James chapter four. What is the other reason for us for praying and asking and never get? James chapter four, verse three. It says, ye ask and receive not because you ask amiss you ask amiss what is to ask amiss that you may consume or use it upon your own lusts oh my friends let me explain god says that another reason why we pray earnestly sometimes coupled with the praying with the fasting God says, if you pray, even if you couple your prayer with a fasting, but if you are praying amiss, if you are praying amiss, God says, says I'm very clear, I will never give it to you. What is to pray amiss? Is it, it is to pray, yet the, the, the motive of asking what I am asking God to give me is not to glorify God. It is to use it to my own pleasure, my own lust. In other words, when I pray and I ask God to give me something, and God who knows my motives, 
if he sees that what I'm asking for is for the use to help the kingdom of the devil or to do something out of my own flesh lusts, God says, I'm not going to give you to give you that. I can't give you something to help you in your fleshy life. You cannot ask something from me and I give it to you, yet I know I'm God that you want to use this in your own lusts. To encourage your own lust. He says, uh, the best thing is I, 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 don't, I, I don't give it to you. Are you, are, you, are, you, are you following this? Are you hearing what the Bible is saying? So, when we pray, yet we don't abide, we won't get. When we pray and we don't believe we have received, we won't get. Number three, when we pray and we pray amiss, God says you won't get. So we, we, we're seeing the sequence. Why we pray and never get. Let's add First Peter 3. To this one of James. Chapter 4 verse 3. First Peter 3. Um, let's look at. Um, chapter 3 verse 7. Paul is talking to the man. Paul is talking to the man. In particular, which I believe also, ladies, it also affects you. He says in 1 Peter 3, 7, Likewise, ye husbands, you men, dwell or live with them, that is your, our wives. Live with your wife according to knowledge. Giving honor, gentlemen, giving honor unto your wife. As unto a weaker vessel. And as remember, your wife is also an heir together with you of the grace of life. Remember, he says, give your wife, live with your wife with knowledge, number one. Number two, give her honor, number three. He says, remember, your wife is also an heir of the, of the grace of life. Why? Listen to this. So that your prayers be not hindered. So that your prayers be not hindered. Gentlemen, this is God. He says, remember this, gentlemen. Before your wife, if she's born again, it's your wife. She's God's daughter. She's God's daughter. She belongs to God. Now, God said, this is my daughter. It's your wife, but it's my daughter. So he gives us instructions on how to treat our wives. He says, live with your wife according to knowledge. Understand what a woman is. Understand how women are, are, are made up. Uh, understand how women are, are, are wired. Understand how women react and act. Understand their emotional uh, uh, life and so on. Study, find out now. That's according to knowledge. Number two, the Bible says, give honor to your wife. Don't treat her like she's a piece of rubbish. Don't treat your wife like she's a worthless thing. When that woman sleeps there crying after you have told her some stuff and she cries and she wonders why she accepted your love proposal and she's crying there and you go and sleep and snore, because according to you, when she's crying, you have fixed her. Yeah, you have shown her that you are the man. God says, listen, sir, when you do that to your wife, he says, your prayers will never arrive at my throne. Imagine you have decided to go and pray up the mountain somewhere in the bush and so on. You have decided to go for whatever days in the bush praying with some fasting, dry fasting prayers in the bush. But before you leave, you say things to your wife that break her heart. You do things to her that break her heart. And you are going, you are proud, you are going to spend 10 days in the bush praying. But your wife is crying. God says, all that you're going to do, sir, in the mountain, there where you're going, you're just going to make a noise. It's not going to be prayer because he will not be listening. Listen, friends. Even ordinary biological parents of our, of our wives, if you abuse their daughter, if you misuse your, their daughter, 
You torture her. You mess her up emotionally, physically, spiritually, and you don't care. They will not accept it. They will not accept that you're a good son-in-law. Now, if human fleshy people can do that, how much more God, man? Remember your wife. It's a, she's a spirit that lives in a body. Now, obviously, her body, the Bible says in First Peter, in First. Uh, First Peter, in rather First Corinthians chapter seven, it says a body it, it belongs to you as much as your body belongs to her, but you don't own her spirit. You don't own her spirit. God owns her spirit. Now you cannot treat her anyhow. You cannot abuse her, and 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 then go and pray. God said, I won't listen to your prayers. Now say, you don't tell me you don't care. Because I know there will be a day where you will pray earnestly and which God can miraculously answer your prayer. Where you, you, you are imagining that God will, will somehow just, 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 just get involved. I'm saying to you, it won't happen. It won't happen. God says, I'm not going to listen to your prayers. So friends, especially with the men today, that's one of the reasons why we would pray and never get answers. That is the way you are treating your wife. Yes, the way you are treating your wife. He says, treat her like she is a weak vessel. He didn't say women are weak vessels. Have you heard many people preach that women are weak vessels? The Bible doesn't say that. It said, treat, treat her as... Treat her as you would treat a weak vessel. Treat her as you would, you would treat a, a glass container or a glass that you used to drink with. You can't throw that glass. You, just, you can't throw it on the, on the floor because you know it's brittle. It will break. So God is saying women are like that. If you don't handle her well, she may cry. And a father God may intervene. And one of the ways of him intervening, besides that he might, get, he, might, he might take steps against you, he says, number one, he won't listen to your prayers. Please, sir, don't ignore that. Your wife is very important in terms of getting your prayers answered by God. The last thing today. When we look at James chapter 3, this James chapter 3, we look at uh, verse 16. The Bible says, For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Where there is envy and strife. Now look, when you strive with your wife, according to First Peter 3, 7, it says God will not, it will hinder your prayers. Now James also says the same thing. He says where there is strife, there's always envy. There's always confusion. And there's always evil work. Now evil work comes from evil thoughts. Evil thoughts come from the evil one. Evil one means the devil. So when we, there is strife, that's an open door. You know, it's like when there is wind blowing outside, there's a storm blowing outside and dust and, and, and leaves of trees and papers that are hanging out there. They, if your door is open, they can be blown into your house. So the same applies with your heart. When you are in strife, there's argument, there's, there's, there's argument, there is strive and you are saying nasty things to each other. You are doors that are open and the devil can throw in anything into your life. How do these men that kill their wives cruelly do it? How does it happen? Probably there is an exchange of nasty words and, and nasty actions and so on and that becomes an open door and then the devil comes with a suggestion. Why don't you do this? Why don't you beat her up? Or he can say something worse. Why don't you kill her? And then they do it. The Bible says where there is strife. Where there are the, the, there's a battle of words. The Bible says there is, there is envy there. 
and every evil work. Let's avoid that because it also hinders our prayers. Mama, you cannot say nasty things to your husband and break his heart and then go and pray and cry before God with your hands raised, calling him all the names and so on, speaking in tongues. God is not listening to prayers like that. God does not listen to prayers like that. So I beg you, mama, that put things right. Live right with your husband. Sir, live right with your wife, with your children. Live right when you open up your hair, you, you raise up your hands and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, the heavens will listen. God will listen. And God, remember, there's nothing impossible with him. He can give you whatever. He can do whatever. So friends, these are the things that hinder our prayers. And this, if you listen, they are not strange things. I've shared some of these things several times, maybe this year or even last year. Because I'm concerned that we are children of God. Some of us are leaders. And we pray in the name of Jesus and nothing happens. And yet God said, when we ask for anything in his name, he shall do it. But now we're studying. Why do we then pray and then we don't see results? Yeah, the answers. God bless you as you meditate on these things. We are about to end the year. Let's prepare for the new year. Maybe we did some of these mistakes this year. But 2024 is not very far from now. May God help us. That we put things right and step into the new year with a new perception of our Christian walk. Besides, it means we have neared, remember the 1st of January, we were very far from now, from 2024. Now 2024 is just a few days away. And by the grace of God, we may enter it. But the thing is, why would we enter this way of 2022, 2023, 2021, and so on? Why don't we step there as new creatures? Because it will be a new year. God bless you as you meditate on these things. Let's pray together. Daddy, I usher in your people after I've shared with them why some of some our, our prayers are not answered. It's all in your word. There's nothing that has just come out of my head and my mouth, but it's all in your word. And I pray in the name of Jesus that, dead, you will help that your people understand in the name of Jesus. I give you praise and honor and glory in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And thank you very much, Papa. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, the Bible says, they that have received Jesus are given the power to become sons of God. We become sons of God when we have accepted Christ. Now John 8, 44 says, without Jesus, we are sons of the devil. As long as you are not a son of God, you are a son of the devil, according to John 8, 44. Now you don't want to be, I know you don't want to be a son of the devil. So I'm asking you, if you will, that you pray with me if you know you have never accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. So that you can be forgiven, given the power to become a son of God yourself. Pray this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, this very morning I heard your word. I open my heart. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me all my sins, Lord. In my heart, I believe from this morning I'm born again. I'm saved because I've received the Lord Jesus, the Savior of the world. Amen. If you have prayed that short prayer, I believe you're God saved. But now you need a church where they can, you can be encouraged on this new road that you've chosen to walk in. And I pray that you stick to this because this is the truth. And God bless you as you walk with him. If you want to come and fellowship with us, we are just here by the main road at Chfranani. If you stay around, you know what I'm talking about. You can come. We're next to Ramondo Filling Station. You can come. We shall look after you. We'll do our best to accompany you to eternity with God. God bless you as you make your decision. Bye-bye.